We got contacted on Instagram the other day by a brand new company we'd never heard of, Trust Golf, who are a direct to consumer golf ball manufacturer. They're selling their golf balls on Amazon across all of Europe. This video is completely not sponsored. It isn't, we've not been paid to do this advertisement at all. Melanie and the team over there has sent us a dozen of their premium golf balls, the Trust Aoras, for us to put to the test. Whether it be good or whether it be bad, they're happy for us to do a review on these and let you guys at home know what they're like. So, getting straight into it, these balls are a three-piece urethane covered golf ball. I'll read through the marketing they've emailed me with regards to the claims of their balls and how they describe their balls. I usually use the TaylorMade TP5 golf balls. They're a five-piece urethane covered golf ball. Really soft feel, mainly the reason why I use it. I feel like I get good control, good distance, and it's a bit of a lower trajectory for me. I use Pro V ones or Pro V one Xs. Just use them for a long time now. I feel like they're consistent ball. You know what you're getting with them. Good durability. They are a bit on the pricey side, yes, but I'm happy to spend the extra money on the ball. They're the flagship balls as well. Yeah. TaylorMade TP5. Titleist Pro V1, flagship golf balls. All golfers of all abilities know them golf balls and have probably used them golf balls. To start off, I'll show you the packaging that's come in, which I think is of note. It is really good quality. So this is the box you get. Nice and sleek, a little bit different. Normally you just get the ones that lift straight off the top, but this sort of sticks on there. It's premium packaging. I mean, you wouldn't think they're cheap balls. So I'd say it's just as good, if not better than the other balls. Yep. Nice and sleek. Just as good as any other ball you're gonna get. The looks of these golf balls are unique. I would say. I have had these out of the packaging once already, and if I show you these, it's personally not to my taste, but it may be to your taste at home. They are icy blue. I don't know if you're how well you're picking that up in because of the sun, but they are really glittery blue color. Baby blue, I haven't seen a golf ball in that color before. No. Yeah, so it's really, it's got a really, really glittery finish on it. I do like the lineup bit on the side. Obviously, if you line up your putts, that's nice and big, two arrows either side. The logo is quite smart, trust one. Just the color for me, I, I'm not someone who plays a colored golf ball. This is their flagship ball, this is their most expensive ball. They do have other balls in their range which are a little bit cheaper on the price point. Only offering them in, the, in this color and Melanie and the guys at Trust let us know if you do do them in a white or alternative colors, but as far as I'm aware, it is only the icy blue that yeah. they come in. Let us know in the comments, do you like the color of that? Icy blue, glittery, is that a golf ball color that you would play? If I go into what I've been sent from Melanie and the team over at Trust Golf. Our Trust are describing their golf ball is very much like a sports car. Everything they're doing in their marketing is surrounded by a sports car. And what I mean by that, you've got classic streamlined supercar aesthetics. Certain golf balls look like they have a clear sleek coat on. The coat on a golf ball is going to do the same thing as a coat on a sports car. It's going to be dirt resistant, air resistant, wind resistant, and sleek. I don't think any golf ball is going to be dirt resistant, especially in England. I don't think any golf ball is necessarily wind resistant. Air resistant, is that the same as wind resistant and sleek so it's a sleek looking golf ball crystal urethane covered like the shock absorber in your car an excellent material technology can absorb the shock when your golf ball lands this allows you to stop your ball in the green exactly where you want it to it also provides a fault tolerance final reactive core this is probably my favorite one the core of the golf ball is just like the engine in a sports car if you put your foot into the accelerator then you're going to feel the incredible speed and see the distance this also goes for lower speed drivers too if you press down lightly on the accelerator you'll be able to feel the consistency and stability of a sports car it's exactly the same with the reactive core in a trust golf ball someone with a high swing speed is going to feel the speed and distance someone with a low swing speed is going to feel the consistency and stability of the golf ball so i think they're, they're just trying to appeal to every type of golfer yeah regardless of swing speed regardless of how you play we'll get into price point a little bit later on in the video as well because i think that's definitely a, a topic worth talking about yeah. what we're going to do jump on the chipping green we're going to hit some putts we're going to hit some chips see how they're spinning see how they're reacting see how they feel off the face then we'll jump out on the golf course play some holes let you know what these balls are like Right, so that's a good 15, 20 minutes spent chipping, putting, even putting them in the sand as well. Initial thoughts, I won't go into it too much because I'd like to get them out on the course first and so would you, wouldn't you, Charlie? Yeah. They're a little bit of a firmer feeling golf ball. For a three-piece urethane covered golf ball, they are a little bit firm. They're a little bit more clinky off the club face, I would say. You can feel it on the putter. 
and the short wedge shots, whether that sort of nullifies and dim downs a little bit once we start hitting longer irons and longer wedges into the greens is yet to see. Spin's okay. One thing I would sort of note straight away, which they're, they're definitely not dirt proof. So that's probably There's a little bit of sand and stuff on there. But... A little bit of sand, a little bit of scuffing on the side there, quite a bit of scuffing on the side there. And I think with the, with the color of these golf balls, it sort of enhances the dirt yeah. on the golf ball. You'd think less than white, but I actually think it enhances it more than white with the icy yeah. blue blue colour. But initial thoughts, good ball. Nothing's really screaming out to us to say that it's absolutely brilliant at the minute. Nothing's really screaming out to us to say that they're rubbish. Get onto the course. We'll play the first, second, third. We'll hit multiple shots with wedges from different distances. We'll hit irons. We can hit driver on the third. It's a par five. Give these a real good run through. Catch up with you on the fifth tee and give you our honest opinion. So before me and Charlie get out on the course, I wanted to pop down to the swing warehouse. You've seen this place on our channel before, just to get some base numbers with these balls. See how much they're spinning, see how far they're carrying. Got a sleeve of the TaylorMade TP5 balls, the balls that I use at the moment. So we're going to use these as our base numbers, see what these are coming up with. Three piece urethane ball, five piece urethane ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit some wedge shots, I'm going to hit some seven irons, I'm going to hit some drives. We'll pull both of the numbers up on the GC quad, go through the data, and then get back onto the golf course. So to start off with, We'll get the TaylorMade TP5s. I'm gonna start off with a wedge, 54 degree wedge. Hit some knockdown shots, hit some full shots. Get some data on that. Do the same with the truss balls, compare the both. So we'll start with some little 50, 60 yard chips. So just five chips played, 50, 60 yard chip shots with the TP5. I'm gonna do the same with the truss balls. Exactly the same swing, see what numbers we come up with. Right, five shots hit with both. We'll start with the TP5, the numbers I'm really looking at here, total distance, ball speed, and backspin. If we start with total distance, 61 yards with the TP5, 62 yards with the trust, so they're going exactly the same distance. Ball speed, relatively similar, 55.2 miles an hour with the TP5, 54.5 miles an hour with the trust. The one thing that is a concern for me is the backspin, the amount of spin that I'm getting off each ball. The TaylorMade TP5, I'm getting 6,888 revs per minute, with the trust 5,223. That's a good 1,500 revs down. You wanna try and get as much spin as you possibly can off these little wedge shots. That's probably why I gained the TP5. The trust ball does feel a little bit firmer. It's definitely got more of a cranky noise off of the face, but that number is way too low for me on little chip shot wedges. We'll see if that thing sort of continues as I start to hit some four wedges, get into the seven iron, get into the driver. But to start off with, that is a red flag for me. So let's get into some full shots then. 54 degree wedge. Carry distance should be anywhere between 110 and 115. Spin I'd like to see it around 10,500 to 11,500. We'll start off with the TP5s, hit the truss ball second, look at the numbers. Right, five done with the TP5s. Now time for the trust. Interesting numbers again. Not to note, just as a side note, most times when you take a shot with these wedges, your club gets covered in the icy blue <laughs> aura. But we can look past that, but what we can't look past are these numbers, unfortunately. Starting with the TP5, spin is exactly where I want it to be, 10,500 on average, some hitting just under 11,000, right on the number where I want it to be. 
Good ball speed, 91.5 miles an hour. Carry distance exactly, pretty much to the number, exactly what I was looking for, 110 to 115. It was landing 111, rolling out to 115. Perfect numbers. The reason why I gained the TaylorMade TP5, they are right in the slot of, of where, what I'm looking for out of a golf ball. If we go on to the Trust Aoras, <laughs> spin on average is 7,712. That is just under 3,000 revs per minute less. That's huge, that is such a big gap. That spin is a spin that I would expect to see with a seven iron, not with a full swing, clean grooves, 54 degree wedge. Ball speed, again, down, I'm down nearly four miles an hour on ball speed. That is a huge, huge gap in wedges. For that reason alone, I wouldn't be buying these golf balls myself. Let's see if when we get into the longer irons, the seven iron driver, if that gap starts to sort of close and we're not seeing such a mammoth difference in, in numbers. So moving on to the 7-iron, 620 MB 7-iron, starting off with the TaylorMade TP5s. Based on these numbers, I'm not holding my breath, but the feel and the performance on the golf course that you might see in a second after we're done here may sort of contradict what, what we're seeing on the GC quad. I doubt it, but let's get into it. Probably should have mentioned that before I started hitting them. 7-iron for me, carry distance 185 to 190 on a good strike. Spin around about 6,000 to 7,000 is what I would expect to see from my 7 iron. feel goes, you really start to not feel the difference as much of the firmness of those truss golf balls when you start to get into the longer irons. It's extremely noticeable with the putter and the wedges. When you're hitting a full shot with the seven iron, it's not as bad, but let's pull the numbers up, see what they're looking like. <laughs> Interesting numbers. Interesting numbers to say the least. Let's start with the TaylorMade, same as before. So backspin with the TaylorMade, average 6,226 in the window where I'll be looking for 6,000 to 7,000. Ball speed coming out 123.9 miles per hour on average. Pretty good as well. Carry distance 175, total distance 185. I did hit the Trust five shots a little bit better than what I hit the TaylorMade, but they were all pretty decent strikes. The Trust has kept up with it. Jumping over to that, ball speed 126.5. That is three mile an hour ball speed, nearly more than the TaylorMade TP5s. Spin 6,243. Pretty much down to the last rev per minute, exactly the same. Carry distance, it's actually out carried the TP5 by four yards. TP5 was 175 carry distance, the trust is 179. Total distance, 189, four yards further total distance. So pretty much exactly the same golf ball as the TP5 when you're going into full shots with the seven iron. Interested to see what the drivers are gonna do now. Really, really interested to see how it's gonna perform. We've got the sim. All set up, we've got the GC quad. Let's hit some of the TP5s, let's hit some of the trusts. It's got my attention now, this ball, I'm not gonna lie. The range is set back at 374 yards to the pins, we're not making that. Probably not my best display of driving there, but some good shots hit in there. They'll be good for the numbers. Let's see what the truss comes out with. I am intrigued. Thank you. 
final club, driver, let's go through the numbers. Tail Bay TP5, again, exactly where I'd expect it to be. Ball speed 163.1, good. Carry distance 287, rolling out to 311 yards, with an average backspin of 2,141. So, again, right in my pocket, the reason I play that ball. Trust, ball speed, down five miles per hour. That is a lot with a driver. 158.4 miles an hour. Spin, crazy low. 1,636 on average, with one of them coming out with 1,300 spin. Low, bullet, which has obviously affected the carry distance. It's down five yards, 283 carry, but it's rolling out the same at 311. So if you want to hit an absolute bullet low ball, you play links courses, you want to roll it out, trust that it might be good for you, but there's the indoor testing. Wedges, not great at all. Irons, made up for itself. Driver, low spin bullet. Let's get back out into the course, play a few holes with Charlie, let you know what we think of these balls. So Joel, let's talk price of these golf balls. 38 pound per dozen. They're selling all of their European orders through Amazon at the moment. And I don't know whether that's why the manufacturing cost and market and the shipping cost are maybe a little bit higher because they're going through Amazon. I'm not too sure because usually the main selling point of direct to consumer golf balls is the lower cost. They haven't got the overhead costs of going through a third party distributor or anything like that. It's produced by the manufacturer and sold directly to the consumer. So 38 pound for me puts it right up there with TaylorMade TP5, Titleist Pro V1, and for a golf ball company that I personally never heard of until they sort of reached out to us and asked us to review their balls, I'm not really seeing anything that would make me move away from no. at that price point. I mean, when, when they got in touch, I looked at I looked them up on Amazon and TaylorMade TP5s and they were five pound less. For a straight to consumer golf ball, I think it needs to be less. Right, 
Right, so there you go, three holes played, multiple wedge shots, bunker shots, drivers, putts. Conclusions of the trust over a golf ball, I'll let you start. I don't think anything they claim isn't true, but I wouldn't say it's as effective as they say it is. I think that's a good way to put it. They say low ball flight, good for high club head speed, good for low club head speed. I don't think any of them things are wrong, but I don't think they're as good as they possibly make out. I don't think they're as good as what their price point suggests. The best way I would describe these golf balls is they feel firm off the putter and the wedges for short shots. I think they start to feel a lot softer when you're playing full wedge shots, yeah. iron shots. They don't seem to come off the driver face as hot as TP5, the ball that I use. That could be down to my strike. Good balls, trust Aura, good balls. Only downside is the price point, £38 per dozen for these. Durability of them has been pretty well, really good. Hasn't really cut up much at all with sort of long iron shots, wedges, drives. In conclusion, good ball, price point just a bit too high. They have got three or four other ranges at a lower price point that we would like to test, let you guys know what they're like. Try them for yourself, Trust Aura. You can get one on Amazon, we'll put a link down below for you. We'll also put a link to Trust's Instagram. Thank you again for sending these balls over. Enjoy testing these, and what do we say, Charles? See you in the next one. See you in the next one.